Jones here. Welcome to my second vlog for Team GB's YouTube channel. Uh, on this vlog, we're going to be looking at my journey through my swimming career so far. Uh, take a look at some of the bits that you can see behind me, um, including Commonwealth Games 2018 and Europeans 2018. Take a look at some old footage and some photos and bits and bobs I have, and um, see how where I started, where I am today, and how it's got me to this point in the lead up to Tokyo, hopefully next year. So my parents wanted me to learn to swim from a very young age, for a life skill really, just to be safe in the water. I think I joined my first swimming club, which was Kingston Royals, at around the age of five years old. And I remember at the trial to get in the club, I could swim butterfly, but I was scared until one of the other older girls at the time, she convinced me to do it. And I think that was what got me a place in the club because all my other strokes weren't very good at the time. But swimming a 25 meter fly at the age of like five or whatever, that was what got me in the club. Whilst I was at Kingston, around the age of nine, I think I swam my first counties. And then it was every year from then we did counties and regionals. And I remember age nine, swimming first 200 fly at county level. You entered a made up time and obviously swam and tried to better it and then you got your own times. But my dad offered me a pound for every second I knocked off in those days. It was like how you convinced your kids to swim fast, I guess. But he regretted it that day because I knocked off 78 seconds off my entry time. So he had to stick to his word and give me 78 quid um, for my silver medal in the 200 fly at nine years old. But yeah, still a very prized possession was my silver medal, county medal. I obviously have kept pretty much everything from my age group swimming days. These are a few of them here, I can get them. So there's a few of the age group medals there. There's the other load there. Quite a few of these are club champs, bear in mind. There's a couple of Welsh national ones, there's county ones, little club galas, a couple of Celtic tri nations in here. There's all sorts of different things in there. Some of these are over 20 years old now. I worked hard to collect them, so, and earn them, so I'm gonna keep them. Really heavy. <laughs> My arms. <laughs> I think I qualified from my first British Nationals. I think the age of 11. I can't remember if I finaled or not. I do remember that my first Nationals, I refused to wear goggles because I didn't like them. Um, from there on, I think I qualified for Nationals every year since, but I don't think it was until I was possibly 15 or 16 that I medalled, or it could have been later than that. I wasn't like overly great when I was younger. I just, I was sort of ticking along, working my way through and always like appearing at the meets. Right alongside her challenging now is Alice Thomas from Kingston Royals. And it looks like Hayley with a bit between her teeth has just got the advantage. Coming up to the touch now, board confirms the result. And it's victory then for Alice Thomas, Kingston Royals. Snatched in the final stages there, closing out in 61.86. Gentlemen, our National Youth Championship medals. I got picked up for Welsh squads around age 14, 15, something like that. Lucky enough to be able to represent Wales and climb up the ladder from there, really. And then got picked up for the Youth Commonwealth Games in 2008, so I was age 17, which were held in Pune in India. Um, and that was a really, really great experience, sort of the first kind of international multi-sport event that I was able to be part of and experience. A long way away from home as well and that was that was really really great experience to go go to and um, I came back with three medals a gold a silver and a bronze all relay medals but so so great probably some of my favorite medals really to be honest I think because I managed to get a collection and they were all sort of like team kind of medals because they were relay relay medals and then um, the gold one was the 4x200 freestyle relay and it was such like a a, a cool relay to be part of because on the podium we've managed to, as Wales, we've managed to beat the Australian girls and the English girls. So obviously for Wales that was like quite an achievement. So yeah, that was a really fun night. So that's a great memory for me uh, on a personal level as well. So I made the decision pretty much straight after my A-level exams to move to Swansea to pursue my swimming career on a full-time basis, basically. I had applied for uni at the same time, um, but I just deferred my uh, entrance um, just because I wanted to focus solely on swimming for a few, a few years, it turned out to be. And I was aware that Delhi Commonwealth Games was only a year away at that time because I moved in 2009. So yeah, I wanted to focus straight, straight on swimming when I moved. 
So I managed to qualify for Delhi in 2010, the first senior international multi-sport event. I think it's widely known that there was a lot of disorganisation. I think the, the athletes' village was like falling down before we even got there. There's a lot of Delhi belly going around, things like that. But it was my first experience of a major sporting event to go to. So it probably wasn't the best experience to go to, but I knew no, I knew no different really. All that being said, I didn't swim very well. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't great, I mean the atmosphere wasn't great, but in terms of having one down as experience, I mean you could only go up from there, so having one bad experience of, as your first, it was kind of good. But yeah, I didn't make any finals, I think I made semi-finals, I swam some relays which were great, great experience to, to be on a big stage like that. But yeah, only onwards and upwards from there for me. So obviously, of the Delhi Commonwealth Games as being my first one. My parents came out to support me. Um, I don't think they would have gone to India otherwise if it weren't for me um, qualifying. Um, they went a bit mad with um, memorabilia and things like that. They obviously bought a cushion cover, a little scarf, um, which I've still got now. Uh, what else? Uh, these are my suits that we had. We obviously had the plain black one there and then uh, the red one or the rocket red one that I used to love wearing came my, my like lucky suit. I think um, I think these were really popular afterwards. I think everybody loved the full red suit because I think only the Team Wales Commonwealth swimmers got given the red suits, the full red suits. So these became really popular afterwards um, with all the swimmers because they'd seen us wearing them. So yeah, these were definitely my favourite anyway at the time. <laughs> Following Delhi 2010, I suffered with a bit of an injury, a couple of up and down years, and then. The next major competition for me was representing Wales and Glasgow in 2014 Commonwealth Games. The level of organisation was just amazing and the atmosphere was awesome as well, like being at Toll Cross with the stands all done, they'd redone the pool as well. I'd managed to make a final from a 200 fly and come fourth by 0.18 of a second which was to haunt me for the next four years. But yeah, I loved it and I know a lot of us, because it was a home games, that home experience of the home crowd cheering for you, even though we were Wales and it was in Scotland, you still had that GB crowd feeling, getting behind us as, as British swimmers, basically. So this time around, our suit was a single leg colour. I think this was just the way that Speedo were doing their coloured suits. So we did have a little jazzy green strap on the back. I think this was popular as well with the guys back home wanting wanting the, the coloured suits because these weren't available on sale, I don't think, until we'd worn them. So yeah, this was always like a thing, like, well, what colour what colour suits are the kind of different countries going to have? Um, we also got like a little training suit that was cool because it has, it has whales on it, like everybody loves, loves to show their pride for their country. Um, and then our race hats, everybody wants a race hat with their name on it. Country and their name, I mean, it's quite a proud thing to have. Yeah. So I graduated Swansea Uni with a degree in psychology in 2015. Um, and then following that, in early 2016, I had a slight injury, which meant that Olympic trials, um, I ended up just missing the team. It was a good meet for me coming off the back of an injury. You know, I won the 100 fly, I came second in the 200 fly, but obviously didn't make any selection times. In 2017 at British Champs, I did manage to qualify and get selected for my first British team for Worlds. Which, yeah, I was so, so excited for and so happy when that selection letter actually came through and it was there in black and white that I was selected, I was on that team. And with names and faces that I had seen the previous year competing in Rio. Um, so it was a bit of a weird dynamic actually because I was a newbie in terms of I hadn't been on a British senior team before. Um, but I was also one of the oldest on that team. Maybe looking back now, I wouldn't have said at the time, but I was probably a little bit overwhelmed by the size of the venue and, and the size of the event. Like, Worlds is a big thing and a big stage. And at the time I was like, oh yeah, I can handle this. I've done like major major competitions before, thinking about Commonwealth and things like that. But the pool in Budapest was so big and the fans, like the Hungarian fans, they love their swimming and they know their swimming and they're so loud. And I remember my um, semi-final for the 200 fly, I think I had three other Hungarians in there and honestly they were so, so loud cheering the Hungarians on. Um, I could hear them underwater and I was like, I've never experienced this loudness before. And I think it's a massive learning curve that I took forward then from there. Yeah, so 2018, pretty good. I'd already managed to pre-qualify for Commonwealth Games, I think from the summer before. Just remember being really relaxed 
and feeling really confident going in, had a really good block of work everything was like going smoothly, I wasn't overthinking anything and things were just falling into place. In the meets leading up I remember doing a PB at Edinburgh International meet, unrested and being like, oh yeah, just shrugging it off like, yeah I'm feeling pretty good. So yeah, all the prep was really good. But on the day of my 200 fly, I don't really remember too much really because I, I guess it's not really significant until you achieve at the end of the day. Um, so I just was going about my normal routine that I had in place, you know, relaxing um, as best I could and preparing for my race that day. My heat in the morning had gone really well. I remember feeling pretty strong and I didn't want to worry about time, I just wanted to race the girls even though I had posted the fastest time in the morning that there was every chance that they could come back at me in the evening so I didn't want to get my hopes up too much or overthink the situation and I just wanted to go out and race in the evening and I remember feeling very very calm in the evening going up for the final and my coach just said one sentence to me and that was you know what to do that's all he said to me in going into the courtroom for the final Come to the halfway mark here. Very tight, that's for sure. And now Thomas takes up the running. So Wales in front, one to four to The Kenyan in second, one to four to It's pulling the home to a second. He hit the cross. He said, how much petrol do these girls have in the tank for this final lap? You can make a big inroad. Thomas goes in front. Yeah, it's touched the wall. I had to take a few seconds to get my goggles off my face because they were mushed on so hard before I turned around and looked at the board and then kind of realised I'd won and what time I'd done. And that was like a double whammy of like, oh wow, I've won. Oh, I've just done that time. It was that like, oh my gosh, I've just done this. I've just achieved like what I've dreamt of doing um, without overthinking it. And yeah, and I was so, so happy. And then as I got out, like all this emotion just came on. There were some amazing pictures of me just like blubbering everywhere. After that two fly, I had the heat of the women's four by hundred medley relay the next day. And it was pretty exciting because we were in hot contention for medals, which Wales hasn't been in for a very, very long time. It was such an exciting evening, I think because we were all on a high anyway, because it was at the end of the week, we'd all had like a really fun and successful meet anyway. And for us girls to go out there and get that bronze medal it was just like, it was such a fun thing to do as part of a team because it's rare that in swimming you get to do something together. Yeah, to be there with Kat, Chloe and Georgia and, and to get that bronze medal for Wales was, was really, really, really exciting and a great thing to do. So yeah, that bronze medal sits there with my gold one as proud as, proud as that one. So. So bits and bobs from Gold Coast, um, what have we got, we've got my race hat, fairly similar to last time, just slight differences, uh, I think that might be my 200 fly one I wore possibly, I wore a black one, we have the race suit, this is brand new and I think I, I didn't wear these ones because I had, um, had a different suit sponsor at the time, but these were the ones that were given to us. Yeah, no no bright colours that were given to us this time, just the red lining, which I don't think was on sale at the time, just special for us. Not as cool as before, but they were alright, not bad. My, these were ones that were given to me from my sponsor at the time. Um, so somewhere in here will be the suit that I actually wore. I could probably figure out exactly which one it was, because uh, I labelled them all. Here we go, so one like this, pink, power pink, mid 200 fly, that would be it. Europeans in Glasgow was a pretty cool event to be at, obviously home crowd, 
uh, my second time swimming under the British flag. Um, my 200 fly, I didn't manage to replicate the time I'd done in April that year uh, in Gold Coast, but I was just so pleased to be able to get onto the, on that podium. So I won myself a bronze medal. Um, I get some really, really tough opposition. So uh, my first senior international medal under British colours. So as a women's 4x100 medley relay, we managed to get the bronze medal as well. That was actually quite a funny story in the heat. The TV crew there, they had cameras that kind of were on an overreaching arm that went into the lane so they could get a close-up kind of view for the TV. And on my leg, on the fly leg, approaching the turn, I was kind of aware of this like black blob coming in. And I suddenly thought, oh no, I'm gonna hit this. And I did hit the camera, absolutely walloped at one. It stopped my arm coming into the wall and I ended up touching the wall with one hand. Did some kind of weird turn off the wall and I was just absolutely bricking myself coming back thinking, I've just got my team disqualified. I've touched the wall with one hand here. Didn't even think like, as the camera's full, like it'll be fine. But it was all fine. Like my hand was a bit bruised and kind of swelled, swelled up a little bit, but cameras got, got banned from that end of the pool and it was all fine in the end. And obviously we swam, swam the final of the relay and ended up with that bronze medal. And I think we got a British record in the process. So all was good. Um, but yeah, it's just not something you expect. <laughs> Last year in 2019, I qualified for my second World Championships team in Guangzhou. So I finished my 200 fly in fifth. So I wasn't far off the podium there and I think I still had it within me to do better and um, possibly get there. So I think like all of these major meets throughout my career have just like been building blocks in terms of confidence and looking forward to Tokyo. They kind of put me in a good stead and I sort of feel like I know not totally what to expect but I feel like I'm better equipped to deal with what comes at me in terms of like a bigger stage. I know sort of like the competitors I'm going to face and race against. Um, I know what a big environment and big crowd feels like although that might change now with circumstances but in terms of a big arena um, a big space and a big pool I sort of know what that feels like what that looks like. So yeah, and also in terms of the prep for Guangzhou, British Women had us have the holding camp out in Yokohama, which is where the holding camp and prep will be for Tokyo. Um, so in terms of the familiarity of what Japan will be like, I've been lucky enough to be there a couple of times now, so that's starting to feel a little bit more familiar for me, because um, the culture and environment is very different. So anything I can do to make that feel more normal and more familiar is, is just gonna make it feel more relaxed when I am there. It's it's just confidence building and all of these kind of experiences and things that I can get, um, regardless of how the results go for me, will just mean that confidence and everything builds up so that I can perform at my best when I do get there in the future. So that's it, we'll wrap it up there. Um, hope you've enjoyed watching the highlights of my swimming career so far. Go ahead and check out Team GB's YouTube channel for some more content. There'll be plenty more in the build up to the Tokyo Olympics next year. Um, you can get, check out my social medias here. I'll pop them up on the screen somewhere around here. Um, yeah, hopefully I will see you in the next one.